When talking about a distribution, we have to start by picking something uh, that's actually measurable. Some examples, it could be the length of time it takes for you to get to work on your commute. It could be the number of red lights you hit on the way to work. It could be the number of calories you eat per day or the number of times you eat per day. Or it could be the amount of calories you burn when you go to the gym or how often you go to the gym per month. It could be the number of hours you sleep per night, the number of hours that your kid sleeps per night, how much time you spend on social media, or it could be how many gigabytes of data you use per month on your phone. So this is a lot of examples I've given, but just think of anything in life that you could actually get measurements for. And then once you, we think of those measurements, we can talk about the distribution. So I'll start with an example of how much sleep I get per night. The values that measurement could possibly be are anywhere from zero hours all the way to 24 hours. Now, if I had to guess where my values are distributed along this, this line here of possibilities from my past experience, most of my values are going to be right around uh, the six, seven, eight hour mark. The height of my distribution would be tallest around six, seven, and eight, because that is the most uh, probable outcome for me personally for hours of sleep. And my distributions probably going to be pretty close to normal. It's symmetric. I get more sleep just about as often as I would get less sleep. If I was talking about my commute to work, for me personally, here are the values that it's ever taken on in the past. I have never gotten to work faster than 10 minutes. There's just no way with all the traffic and the stop lights. And it's never taken me longer than 22 minutes. Maybe sometime in the future, something will change but for the current situation these are the values that my drive to work has taken on so for the distribution for me personally it would look something like this most of the time it takes me 12 to 15 minutes just depending on traffic and lights but it's not quite symmetric i definitely have a skew to the right here because there is a sharp cutoff i really don't think it's possible to get there faster than 10. But there's these trailers out to the right because sometimes traffic's just terrible or there's been a really bad snowstorm or I catch every light red and it does take longer. So my distribution for my commute is skewed to the right by these outliers. And I'll do one more here. For me personally, calories burnt at the gym, just going off of what the machine tells me, how many I burn, I've seen things um, as low as 200 all the way up 700 for me personally. So how does my distribution look? For me personally, it's pretty uniform. I am just as likely to go to the gym and only burn 200 calories as I am to go to the gym and burn 700 calories. That's just the way that things are for me. Sometimes I don't work out as hard. Sometimes I don't work out as long or have as much time. So I personally have a uniform distribution for calories burnt when I go to the gym. So think of any situation in your life. You don't have to look for something that has a normal distribution. Just think of any variable and talk about what distribution it does have. And I wanna warn against the most common mistake I see is instead of listing the different values the measurement could possibly be, I see students list a unit of time. And let me show you what I mean. I've seen students talk about their study habits and how it changes throughout the course of the week, Monday through Sunday. This is a measure of time. Students will say they have a normal distribution. They spend most of their time studying in the middle of the week, and then it's pretty equal. Uh, it tapers off symmetrically on both sides. They study less at the beginning of the week and less at the end of the week. Yes, this looks like a bell-shaped curve, but this is not a distribution here. This is a time series chart where we're measuring how something's changing over time. So don't do anything with time, days of the week, uh, throughout the hours of the day, months of the year. Make sure you have the different values the measurement could possibly be. This, someone could use this same concept of how much time they spend. Instead of doing a time series distribution, you would think of, okay, 
How many hours do I spend studying on an average week? What values could that take on? That would probably be something like this. You, know, you could have a week where you have no time to study. Zero would be your lowest. And maybe midterm, finals, some week when you really need to cram. Maybe 15 is the max for you. Maybe it's a lot more than that for you. But whatever your situation would be, you could do time spent studying. But just think of the values that could possibly be. And then how would your distribution look? Is it skewed? Is it uniform? Is it normal? It would all depend on your personal situation.